If you've followed my channel at all over the past 12, 18 months or so, you'll be well aware I'm a big fan of FlightSim.com CL60. They're amazing force feedback yoke, and they've just implemented a massive upgrade in their software, making the best even better. Big welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. A fantastic yoke in its own right, but with the force feedback, well, it raises it to the next level. Check out my initial review link in the notes below. Version 3 of their force feedback software features a brand new UI, supporting both versions of Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane and Prepared. And it auto-detects your sim on startup if your sim is running. For Flight Sim 24, it should be considered a beta. Development is ongoing. At the top, it shows that your device is connected correctly and which sim you're connected to. Select the cog icon from the bottom left. And here you have a number of options, including auto start if you want it. But I would recommend auto load profile based on the aircraft is activated. Firmware updates are now simplified and a doddle. And a firmware upgrade is necessary to move to version 3. The most significant part of this upgrade, however, are the various settings and how quick and easy they are to do. Now segmented into relevant categories, with an expanded range of parameters available, allowing you to refine your settings to suit the particular aircraft. The introduction of on-off switches and slider bars makes the whole process so much quicker and easier. And of course, you can adjust on the fly. Change a setting, test it in sim, Whilst you're flying, if you're not happy, revert back. Along the top of the UI is where you access your profiles. And this whole process has been simplified as well. It's picked up and using Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. My aircraft is the Cessna 172 G1000. Don't have to enter this data, it's auto-detected. Flightsim.com have a default Cessna 172 profile, which I've downloaded. I've selected Save, now the profile is saved for my Cessna 172 G1000 model. Here you can directly see the profile and the connection data. Note the first profile saved for each aircraft will become the default if you have auto load profile enabled. You also have the option to share profiles with import and export options. To activate a profile while you select it from the profile list, then you select load to make it active. A short message appears to confirm that the load was successful. You can of course save more than one profile per aircraft. If we take a look at this default profile you can see that it has elevator droop. The weight of the elevators at idle push it down. As we increase the throttle and the airflow the prop wash pushes them back up and they drop back down once we ease off on the throttle again and so on. If for example we didn't want that, the change is quick and easy. We go to the flight configurator or parameters. I'm looking here for yoke physics. And here we can see that the yoke full forward force is set to minus 20. Let's change that to zero. Once you make any changes, make sure you hit apply so they become effective in sim. But note, your profile hasn't changed. It has not been saved at this point. But I've reduced the full forward force. We can now test that in sim and on the yoke itself. And we can see now the elevators are sitting more or less horizontal. We've eliminated the elevator droop. You could of course go ahead and change any other parameters you wanted to, but that'll do for now. Let's now save this as another profile for the C172. We're happy with the changes that we made, so we head back up to profile. Remember, we're on the default profile currently. To make sure we don't overwrite the default profile, with our new settings, we select this box here and put in a suitable comment or label or number. It could be 1, 2, 3 and so on. I'm just going to put in a shortcut for elevator so that it's easy for me to recognize. Now I'm going to select save to save this as an additional profile under the C172. We can do a quick check to make sure it's successful by having a look at the drop down menu. There are two profiles. We're good to go. I'm now going to change back to the default profile. So I'm going to select that from the drop down list. Then to make it active, I'm going to select load. This will bring back the forward force on the yoke. Elevators will droop. That's exactly what we expected. Job done. To further demonstrate how easy it is to set up a profile, I've changed the aircraft to the DC-3. This is a much older and heavier bird. So we'll need to change some of the characteristics and flight parameters. 
at the top here we can see it's recognized the aircraft correctly and we're currently on the default C172 profile. First of all we're going to adjust pitch and roll parameters. Under pitch I'm going to change it from minus 22 to minus 45. Under point 3 I'm going to change it from 22 to 45. That'll do nicely for an initial test. Now let's move on to the roll settings. Won't need such a dramatic change here. Going to change the minus 22 to minus 25 and under point 3 from 22 to 25. You'll notice at the top the uh, AP state. This indicates whether your autopilot is currently on or off. And with the CLS 60 you can now opt whether you want the yoke to follow the autopilot. Not sure if the elevators were hydraulically activated on the DC-3 but I'm going to get rid once again of the elevator droop. I'm going to set that to something like minus 8. And so we can go ahead and adjust various parameters. Under stall we'll have to adjust the speed. I think something in the region of about 180, 190 would be right. She is somewhat advanced in years so I think I'm just going to up the vibration just a little bit. I imagine any DC-3s flying currently are a little bit uh, on the vibrationary side. Is that a word? Not really sure actually. Ground vibration looks about right. I don't really need to change that much. Grip settings simply indicate what buttons are activated for what on the yoke. And device info, well that's self-explanatory. Remember, once we've finished making the changes, apply those changes. Then we can head back to our profiles and save this for the DC-3. As we've changed the parameters, it's just a single click to click save. And those parameters are now saved under Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and under the DC-3. And we've now added this to our list of profiles. So much quicker and easier than before. FlightSim.com also has a default 737 profile, which you can download. It's for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, but fully compatible with 2024. Currently on the DC-3 profile, as that was our last profile we loaded. From the tabs, I'm going to select Import and navigate to where you saved it on your PC. There it is there, 737 PMDG. But for force feedback purposes, it'll work across the board for 737s. I'm in the default 737. Now that I've imported it, I need to simply make it active by selecting Load. We can see it's already in the list of our profiles. Comes up with a message, Loading Successful. And job done. If we look at the various parameters, I'm not going to run through them all, but we can see they've been imported successfully. Pitch is set at minus and plus 50. Roll is at minus 25 and 25 and so on. To export one of your profiles, it's just simply a reverse of that process. Quick, simple and easy. For anybody with one of the CLS force feedback yokes, or anyone thinking about taking the dive and getting one, the introduction of version 3 of their software is a significant upgrade and a welcome addition. Please note for the latest sim, this is a beta. As always, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found it useful and informative. Take care. Happy New Year. See you again soon. And ciao for now.